Hey guys, this is Josh Peak. Welcome to the Josh Peak Show, where I'm your host, and um, it's a special uh, podcast today. I'm really excited about it. Um, I told you that we interview uh, entrepreneurs, other podcasters, just high producers, and um, sometimes we even introduce uh, or interview. I'm sorry, um, politicians, or I should, I should say, statesmen and women. Well, today we have uh, David Rader, State Senator David Rader from uh, Tulsa. He used to be uh, head football coach at the University of Tulsa and coached at a couple other places as well, Did had a had a very successful career, and is a great state senator as well, doing a great job down in Oklahoma City. And so we talk about um, Oklahoma, how it's underrated. I think you're going to start seeing a lot of businesses uh, come in to Oklahoma as they'll look at Texas and probably look up north and go, hmm, Oklahoma does pretty well. All 77 counties went red. Um and the tax situation isn't so bad, uh, and tons of resources uh, in, in Oklahoma. It's a great place to relocate a business. So I think you're going to start seeing a lot of businesses and people moving to Oklahoma, probably as an overflow out of Texas. That, that's my prediction. But uh, State Senator David Rader talks about it and some things going on in Oklahoma. It was a great conversation we had. I think you're going to enjoy this podcast. Uh, if you're looking for resources to grow a, a business of any kind, uh, whether it be chatbot building, whether it be digital marketing, um, anything to grow your business, check out the resources page at joshpeak.com where you'll get more information on that, tools that I use and that I recommend to my clients as well. So uh, do that whenever you get a chance. Um, please rate the show. I, I appreciate if you do that on iTunes, uh, if you're on YouTube and you see this as well, uh, Spotify, any type of uh, you know, we're all over the internet with, uh, and podcast syndicates with this, this show. So would love if you give me a favorable rating and a review. Uh, again, this is Josh Peak. I hope you enjoy the show with state Senator David Rader. Hey everybody, this is Josh Peak. Welcome to the Josh Peak Show, uh, where we interview entrepreneurs, other podcasters, and sometimes politicians. And <laughs> today we have uh, Oklahoma State Senator David Rader. Hey Dave, how you doing? Hey Josh, thanks uh, for including us politicians. <laughs> but feel feel free to call us statesmen, okay? Statesmen, there we go. <laughs> well, I used to go. I, I think a lot of you, you know, I used to go to your football camps back in the day. And um, oh, man. those were some really, really good times. Um, they were, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Um, so, so any, you know, my listeners here um, with David Rader, he was the head football coach for University of Tulsa for a significant amount of time and had some really, really good teams. We had some memorable football camps. And, yeah. um, you know, so I, I'm, I'm just glad that you're on and, and take some time to, to spend with my listeners. Well, thank you for asking me. I'm honored to be on your show, Josh. Well, cool. Well, so we got a new session coming up here uh, you coming bet. soon. And, you know, I know there are some hot topics coming up. Um, I, pretty much one of them is what you and I talked about before, and that is uh, obviously we probably don't have the, the, the dollars that we once had, and so we got to find out how to make that, you know, mm-hmm. spread out. What are kind of the what, – what's the talk about uh, how that's going to happen? Well – Here's um, it's, it's very much like your personal budget, what you do at home. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, you know how much money is coming in and you decide where it is you want to spend it. So in, in the state of Oklahoma, we, we, you know, our Constitution mandates is we, we cannot have deficit spending. So whatever comes in, that's all we have to spend. Mm-hmm. So if the economy is good, we have more to spend and. You know, what we like to do here is put it in our savings account, and that's what we've done here, you know, here recently. And that really, really helped when times come back. We just didn't realize that the bad times were going to come so soon. So we made some adjustments in our, our, our revenue gains and saw how our, our savings accounts were going to grow and we were going to be ready for that rainy day. And then the rainy day came in the form of a disease, uh, which is going to make us now going to the next budget session determining where our priorities would be and they probably will not change but the number of dollars 
a lot of those priorities are going to change. And that will just <clears throat> cause everybody to um, shrink some. And um, it's not where we want to be, but there's not much else we can do because the, the economy has not bounced back yet. Yeah, but in Oklahoma, it sounds, I mean, it seems like to me, uh, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, and so it looks mm-hmm. like to me we we don't have the high swings, you know, up and down like a lot of states do. Mm-hmm. So right. So that's that's a I guess that's a, a positive. And then you know this COVID, it's funny we're starting to see people move from from the mm-hmm. more liberal right. states to the the conservative states. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I guess what what we've got to do as a state, pretty much. I mean, if 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 you know, if you're a marketing guy or you're you're a business guy, you're thinking, how do we grow our business? Well, how would mm-hmm. how would we grow the state? What would it take to grow the state? I mean, would that look like? Uh, would I mean, I guess in the in the well, past, people have talked about tort reform and workers' comp reform, or mm-hmm. and uh, we did that. Yeah. Um, what 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 does it take to recruit or attract businesses to the state? It's a great question because I know Matt Padel and our, our Commerce Department and uh, Lieutenant Governor Matt Padel and our Commerce Department are actively doing that. And they're, and they're receiving more looks than they've ever received now because of what you're saying. When, when, when people come to visit and learn of the um, um, excellent business environment that we have, mm-hmm. uh, and what I'm saying there, you know, our, 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 uh, our tax burden is um, lower – at the worst, very competitive to other uh, states. We we do have people that show up for work. Um, we have two excellent um, centers of higher education um, that provide um, uh, uh, students and workers at, at a at one level. And we have an excellent um, VoTech system, a career tech system that that trains uh, so many workers for good salaries as well. And they see that and they say, well, you know, we really need to look here. So that word is getting out there. We have to do as a legislator is keep our state competitive in that, Josh, if you know what I'm saying, we, we don't want to tax our way out of this and not be competitive because we have to have some type of attraction to come in. And then one of the things that uh, happens is that if they come to the Eastern part of the state, and see that if on on tribal land, you know there, your um, uh, there are some federal incentives that can come with that if if you um, build on the eastern part of the state. So those, all those add up to say, hey, you ought to look at coming here, and being in the central part of the uh, of the country. And we have uh, three major uh, interstates that run through here. You you can pretty well truck your 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 goods most anywhere in the country. Then you know what really helps us, Josh, is especially in the part of the country we're in. It says, you know what, if you want to run your um, your business on electricity, then your electricity here is going to be provided by natural gas, water, wind, and some solar. So we are very, very diverse in how we produce our electricity. And companies from either coast like that. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you, that's some good points. I mean, I've always thought that too. You got what I-40, you got I-35, 75, and then if you're up towards Collinsville and Nawaso, you got 75 and 169. So mm-hmm. I think we're underrated. I mean, I think... I, think was, I agree. I really do. I think we're like a, mm-hmm. I mean, a hidden gem, and I probably with some of the environment we're seeing with shutdowns and things happening with other um, mm-hmm. with other states, well, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing people move in here. Well, when you, when you go tell uh, um, companies, if you, bring, if you bring your employees here, Okay. You, you need to know that on March 30th, according to the Tax Foundation, on March 30th, Oklahomans have their Tax Freedom Day. Mm-hmm. And w- what that means is that they begin to work for themselves. They, they've ended working for the government for the year, and for the rest of the year, they work for themselves. That ranks us number two in the country, if not number one. So when you're talking to bringing employees in to do that, that really um, – creates interest and then when you tell them you can buy a house for a hundred dollars a square foot when they're coming from uh parts of the country where it's two hundred dollars a square foot um they really like hearing that as well so we have very very good selling points oh yeah well yeah there are people i talk to it's it's funny they'll they'll see the the houses that we have 
And, and most of Oklahoma, they're like, well, how much does that cost? And when mm-hmm. I tell them, they think I'm, I'm just jo- – there's something wrong mm-hmm. or right. I'm joking, and I'm yeah. not. I mean, we – the affordable housing is, is – is pretty good here and then mm-hmm. not to mention i mean we can get to the east or west side of the country uh either coast pretty quick i mean with right. our with our airlines with mean, tulsa and oklahoma city mm-hmm. uh, we're also close to dallas if we have to or or northwest arkansas so mm-hmm. yeah i think we're underrated i think it just comes down to mm-hmm. maybe marketing it and just getting in getting other country it, other right. countries looking at us and i think we're doing a better better job of that all the time uh, i know that lieutenant governor Pinnell, this is what he's doing and any time that i send him a text and or an email and say, hey, are you looking at this place? He always, he is, Josh, he's always responded back. Yes, we, we've talked to some people in that area, mm-hmm. and he would tell me who they talked with and said they're, they're looking at coming to Oklahoma. So this, the, we, we have a group that's working on it that way, and I, I agree with you. We, we, we have this. And one thing that we forgot to point out, too, is that if you want to bring a company in that builds larger items, uh, then we're connected to the ocean mm-hmm. uh, via the, the Port of Catoose and the Port of Muskogee. Yeah. Yeah. So what's it been like? I mean, uh, you know, going from being a football coach and then <laughs> and then going right into the state Senate. Yeah. I mean, I know we're kind of so sw- switching gears there, but <clears throat> what what's it been like for you? Well, this, this is the uh, this job is the closest I've ever found of uh, the intensity level of coaching um, mm. for for four months out of the year while we're in session. The intensity level is extremely high as we're we're making decisions that will affect the state of Oklahoma. And this is one of the reasons that I want to stay in the state government uh, in the legislature specifically is because we actually pass laws that make a difference. And so many times, you know, so many of us, Josh, are frustrated at the federal level that it just doesn't seem like there's much being accomplished there. And I, I know that we're accomplishing um, uh, much in Oklahoma City, but that intensity level rises because there are, are quite a few bills that's going to affect quite a few people so you want to make sure that you do it the right way and we don't always have it the right way so we have to come back and fix them to do that so that that intensity level has been great i didn't realize the amount of time that it took to be a legislator i was you know you kind of have this feeling that it's a four month out of the year job and it's turned out to be uh, so much more than that it's a full-time job so but i'm not complaining i love it i love representing the people of district 39 and um, working with really a bunch of really good people to try and make our state better. Well, you just got my, I mean, you're obviously, I'm in your district, so you just got my vote, obviously, for Great. this last, this uh, re, you know, re-election. And I'm Thanks. glad to have you as our state senator, uh, for sure. I know you work hard. And um, mm-hmm. what are some of the, what are some of the, the things coming down the pike that we'll be seeing during this well, next session? The, uh, as you know, Josh, uh, last June, the, the people um, approved a Medicaid expansion, and th- that Medicaid expansion went into the the Constitution of the state of Oklahoma. So it's, um, you know, we really don't have any way that we can tweak it. If we find something that needs tweaking, we can't. We have to do exactly what the people voted in. So we're going to have to find a way to um, fund that expansion. And uh, the people also voted down a great way to fund that, and that was to take some money out of the tobacco settlement. Uh, trust and apply it to um, the Medicaid expansion, but that was turned down. So, uh, and now we, you know, I don't know if you just saw the latest unemployment, you know, Mm -hmm. we're still lower than the national average, but we're higher than what Oklahoma should be. So our economy is not great. So, you know, anytime people say, well, you can just go raise taxes. Well, you know, first of all, I don't want to raise taxes. Second of all, if you do raise taxes, you don't, do you do it when the economy's down? I mean, people are out of jobs. Wouldn't that cost more jobs and put more people out of jobs? So you're, you're at a time here where the, the government, you know, most likely is going to have to uh, function on less money than they had the year before. So we have to figure out how to do that because the Medicaid expansion is going to take, um, you know, a significant chunk of that money. Yeah, the good news is though I think we have a you, know, you have a governor and then you have people within the legislation that are ex or have been entrepreneurs. They understand how to tighten the belt a little bit and mm-hmm. and um, and make those sacrifices. And I just think everybody in the state's probably going to have to understand that as well. But like, like thank you, you for, said, thanks for thanks for saying it, Josh. I hope people understand because the the money is just not there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so do you think the numbers, uh, the last numbers that came in, I saw the national. And then for November, and then I haven't seen the mm-hmm. state yet. Do you think that's just because people were afraid to make a move because of deciding what's going to happen with the election? Or do you think that there really is a, 
a re- you know it's 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 um, you know it's it's shrinking maybe a little bit. That's a great question. Um, all, all I go with by the numbers that are in, and I know that we're we're about three point two percent under what we were a year ago. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, but we planned a budget that was three point nine percent under, so we we got a little bit of fudge room. Yeah. And all, all I can go on is what the numbers are coming in. And, you know, some some uh, some columns are better than last year. Some columns are worse. And, you know, one of the some of the a couple of the larger ones are worse than last year, which makes the, the difference for us. And um, you wouldn't be surprised, though, that the uh, the um, excise tax on um, goods bought via the Internet are up over last year. I'm sure you'd be surprised to hear that. I mean, they're, they're that that's way up. Yeah. More and more. Uh, purchases are being made online. Well, let's talk a little bit about another subject, and that is it's, it's been a big national um, subject, but I know in the, some mm-hmm. of the states as well, and that mm-hmm. that is school choice. What mm. Oklahoma, great, great. Is, it sounds to me like Oklahoma is one of the most, I mean, people that live here that homeschool or that mm-hmm. go to private school, charter school, uh, and that want options, this is probably one of the most, it's probably the, the best state to live in. As far as when it comes yep. when it comes to school choice, has mm-hmm. that been a big topic or is that not really a topic right now? Josh, I want to give you a comparison. When, when I ran in 2016 for the first time, okay, education is always going to be at the doorstep. People, yep. you know, be the number one subject when it's all said and done. The number one subject is going to be education. Mm-hmm. Hardly anyone talked about school choice. Okay, they they wanted to know what are you going to do for the teachers because yep. we hadn't we hadn't. Uh, finance the teacher's pay raise at that point. Okay. So that, that was all the talk then. Nobody talked about this time, 2000, in 2020, Josh, overwhelmingly, parents were upset, didn't like the choices that they had, asked, you know, is there some way that you, that you can give them some help, um, you know, for their children because they were very displeased with what was going on. Now, I'm not blaming anybody josh Mm -hmm. okay i'm just saying i'm just giving you the report from the the door to door the same door to door as i went through four years ago there there were more more way more people upset and i even caught i talked to one dad at the door and and you know he was in uh, a local school district and and he you know he thought i was you know i was too far into the school choice thing he didn't like uh the expansion of the Equal Opportunity Scholarship Act. Okay, and I was, we were talking about that, and, and I said, "Well, you know, this is just for parents. They they want another option for their child, and you know, the great majority of that money is going to families that that need the money." And he said, "Well, you know, you have school choice now." I said, "We don't have school choice now." I said, "Well, you know, like like my daughter go, you know, we 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 entered the lottery and my daughter now gets to go to this other school here. I said, well, what about the guy across the street whose daughter didn't win the lottery and has to go to a school that they didn't choose? And Josh, he looked at me as if he had never thought of that before. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, that's what I'm talking about. It's okay for you. You say there's choice, but for that dad across the street, he didn't have a choice. Yeah, you know, we don't have, we don't, even though we have many options, there's still some that the parents are asking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I interviewed Corey DeAngelis on here. He's a big school choice guy. Um, he was on Adam Carolla's podcast. He's been on Fox news. And I think that's what it, it's a national topic too, you know? And I think if you have school choice, it's just like capitalism or, so, or, um, you know, free enterprise, it, it makes a better product. I think competition makes a better product, you know, and it, especially right. when you look at, you've been, a, you understand competition. I mean, you've coached for years and the more competition right. is, it raises the, you know, the tide raises the boat, well, right? So I, I believe that, but I, I, I'll, but one thing I don't believe is that, that if you're, if you're pro school choice, you're anti, um, public education. I, I don't I, think I, that I don't think that's true at all. I mean, we many of us have proved that because we voted for more dollars than ever has been in a vote to pay for our teachers to put more money in the classroom. Mm-hmm. We, we we did that. We did that. Now we're saying, hey, there's some other parents over here that are asking for more options, so we represent them too. All right, so let's not forget about them. Yep. Okay. 
and I, and for the life of me, Josh, I don't understand why people uh, say when you're talking about options for parents that you're all of, all at once anti-public schools. We're not. All of our kids went to public schools. We did. Our grandkids are going to public schools. You know. That's a tough situation to be in. I always thought about that. Like if I was ever to run for an office, uh, like state house or whatever, mm-hmm. I always thought that would be a tough one because say if you homeschool your kids, then when you're running mm-hmm. and you are saying I want education mm-hmm. choice, and that means I'm pro public mm-hmm. schools, I'm pro charter, private, homeschool, you're pro mm-hmm. just education overall. Exactly. And right? that would be a tough one. You know, because people be like, well, you homeschool your kids. I mean, so how can you be? That doesn't mm-hmm. mean I'm not that I'm anti-public school because oh. I'm not. Um, well, God, and God bless the homeschoolers because they continue to pay their taxes, which pays for public schools. So that, you know, good for them. Yeah. Uh, and that that's an option that they chose. And we need to support them. Um, and, and we do. And, you know, one of the ways that I tried to do it a couple of years ago was say, you know, if you're in a charter school or if you're in a homeschool and if you want to go to your local public school and be in the play or be in the band then you should be allowed to do that but we didn't that bill didn't go very far what do you think if they if that if that tried again like if you tried it it's called the tebow bill or but people can call it whatever they want i mean i think it's on the they're trying to pass it in texas it's passed in 30 some states but that Mm -hmm. i here here's my argument on that so i can see where homeschoolers are like that's why we live in oklahoma because we don't want Mm -hmm the state telling us mm-hmm. how, how to homeschool yeah. and if, and that right. opens the door up possibly for them to be able to mm-hmm. do that. The other side of that mm-hmm. argument is for homeschoolers that have mm-hmm. athletes, they can say, well, if it's an opt in bill or if they have to meet a certain criteria, you can still homeschool and opt. You don't even have to mm-hmm. opt in. Uh, mm-hmm. But if you do homeschool and you want to opt in and you want to play at your, mm-hmm. you know, whatever your, your, mm-hmm. your local school, then you have to meet a criteria that other students mm-hmm. kind of have to meet too. Yep. I can see it being a win-win, but there has to be some sort of uh, organization sure. and uh, and some push behind mm-hmm. it. Yeah, there has to be. And, you know, it has to be grassroots. It has to come from the parents. It has to come from the people. And and you make a good point there. I was surprised that uh, you know one of the biggest pushbacks from that bill were from homeschoolers, and that was the exact argument that that was made. And I said, okay, I understand that. Didn't look at it that way. Didn't see it that way. But I don't understand what you're saying. So. Even when you think uh, something would benefit someone, sometimes they don't always see it that way. And that's and education's that way. You know, you, you have the best ideas and, and a good plan to help public schools. And I can name a couple, three bills we had that with, but it wasn't perceived very well, so it didn't go very far. And you have an idea that you think can help homeschoolers and with their kids, and they didn't like it, so it didn't go very far. So you, know, you, you there, there's a broad broad opinion on how to run schools and and so that's the tightrope that we're always walking yeah and you know i there was another uh, friend of mine who's uh he's a u.s congressman we talked and he said if it was to ever happen this would be almost the perfect time because you you are seeing people move to homeschooling a little bit you are seeing because and, and maybe some of covid maybe who knows what is mm-hmm. co- what's causing it um that that's always a debate but if there was a time that it, it may get some traction, it could be now. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, but um, but yeah, I'm I, I'm with you. That's a good point, though. You, like you said, just because you're pro school choice doesn't mean you're anti public schooling no. at all. You know, no, I've, I've I've voted for every bill that would benefit public schools, everyone. Yep. Um, so we so we talked about Medicaid expansion. We've talked about some other. Is there any other things coming up that, um, well, that we're seeing? Josh, you would agree with me. We have too many people in prison, mm. so yep. we we need to do some sentencing reform, and let's do that. And let's there's a way to do that. Uh, we have to figure out a way to do that. And there's um, we have people on the left that want it done. We have people on the right that want it done. We must find a way to do this. Has been done in too many states, and we can do that and still be a safe society. I agree. I agree with that, and and then we're talking about it's costing the state less anyway. So uh, there there has right. to be some way of, of making it work. I do think mm-hmm. that, you know they're we're overpopulated from that from that point of view. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. So well, I know you got a tight uh, schedule here, and so yeah. one other question I had for you um, is: so do you do you miss football? Do you miss football coaching at all? I mean, every that, day. Do you? Yeah. Every day. But I'm going to tell you, Josh, I am really good from my couch 
ever oh, yeah. since I've been ever since I've been out of so I have not made a bad call from my couch. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I understand I understand why talk radio is so popular because man, you can make every right call from your couch. No, isn't that true? yeah, and about every case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well TU's having a pretty good year this year, it looks like. Yes, I mean, overall. Yes. Yes. And um, they, they have a chance for the conference championship. So Yeah. So you we'll co- see if they can get it done. You coached at TU and Alabama, mm-hmm. right? Those are the mm-hmm. those are two places that you coach. Um, right. Where is it? That, is that the only two main places you coached? I started at Alabama, and went to Mississippi State, went to Tulsa, went back to Alabama, and then I ended up at Mississippi University of Mississippi. So yeah, uh, they're, they're all great places. Um, we enjoyed every stop that we made. Made good friends there. Um, good churches, you know, oh, yeah. at, at all those stops and. Yeah, it, we we've been very very blessed in the stops that we've made. Worked with a lot of good people. Yep. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the show. And to my audience, this is yeah. State Senator David Rader. Uh, it's hard for me not to call call you Coach Rader because that's what I that's think fine. it is. <laughs> yeah. That's well, fine, Josh. Well, I appreciate you coming on. You bet. Thank Thanks, you. man. See you. See you.